ever catch yourself like actually thinking about how you think? That's metacognition, and get this, we're trying to get AI to do the same thing. We sure. It's like giving AI a brain boost. Yeah. One that lets it learn and adapt in ways we never thought possible, you know? And today, we're diving into uh, metacognitive prompt engineering. And trust me, this isn't just some tech jargon. This is like the future knocking. It really is. And to, to help us wrap our heads around it, we're going to use a metaphor. Imagine a metacognitive workshop where AI goes to like level up its thinking game. And what's fascinating here is how this workshop idea helps us understand a pretty complex process. Yeah. You know, it's like taking something abstract and turning it into something we can almost like touch and interact with. Right, mm. so no more staring at lines of code. Exactly. We're talking blueprints, workstations, the whole shebang. I like it. First things first, picture this. At the heart of this workshop, there's this massive holographic display, kind of like Tony Stark's workshop, but instead of Iron Man suits, it's showing a constantly evolving web of information, right? The AI's knowledge graph. Think of it like this. Every time the AI encounters a new piece of data, it's like adding a new connection to that web. Mm. But here's the kicker. It's not just storing information. Right. It's actively looking for patterns, making inferences. It's constantly building upon what it already knows. Okay, hold on. Yeah. So it's not just a giant hard drive. Okay. It's more like a brain that's always on, making connections in the background. Yeah. That's kind of freaky, but also incredibly cool. It is, it is. And just like our brains benefit from self-reflection, we're now seeing the power of building that same capacity into AI. Okay. This leads us to the self-awareness station in our metacognitive workshop. Okay, this sounds interesting. What's going on over there? Is the AI like admiring its reflection or something? Not quite. Imagine this, the AI is analyzing his own output, comparing it to the desired outcome. Right. It's essentially scrutinizing its own work, figuring out where it went wrong, huh. and then using that information to improve future performance. So like it's constantly getting better. Think of it as a constant feedback loop for improving accuracy and reducing bias in its decision making. So it's like having a built-in critic. Yes. But one that actually helps you get better instead of just, you know, tearing you down. Exactly. And this ties into the concept of meta-learning, where the AI is trained not just on the task itself, right. but also on how to learn the task more efficiently. It's like learning how to learn which is a powerful concept. Whoa. Yeah. But it's self-awareness is just one piece of the puzzle, right? Right. I mean, we humans, we rely on so much more than just introspection. We've got uh, context experience, that you know, gut feeling that tells us when something's off. How does AI deal with all that like messy stuff? Yeah, that's where things get really interesting. Remember that interactive map we talked about earlier? Uh -huh. The one with like different regions representing different situations? Yeah. Yeah. That's our next stop, the contextual understanding station. Okay, so the AI is like a tourist in a foreign country trying to blend in. Possibly, yeah. Learning the local customs, the slang, the whole nine yards. It's more than just mimicking, though. Imagine this. Yeah. The AI is given a set of prompts. Okay. But each prompt comes with a specific context. Hmm. It could be the user's emotional state, the time of day, even the broader cultural background. The AI has to learn to interpret the prompt uh, in light of all those factors, just like a human would. So it's like teaching AI to like read between the lines yeah. to understand the the unspoken rules of communication. Exactly. That's huge, but also kind of scary. Sure. Depending on how good it gets at it, right? Absolutely. And that's why the next stage in our workshop is so important, the hierarchical reasoning station. This is where we try to ensure that the AI's decision-making process is uh, logical, transparent, and and aligned with our values. Okay, I need a visual here. We've got this AI. It's self-aware, it understands context, but how do we make sure it doesn't go all like HAL 9000 on us? What does this reasoning station even look like? Think of it as like a giant flowchart. Okay. Where each decision point is clearly laid out. Okay. The AI can't just jump to conclusions. It has to follow a logical path, evaluating evidence, considering alternatives, and weighing potential consequences. So instead of relying on intuition or gut feelings, it's it's forced to think things through, like systematically. Is that even possible? I mean, our brains don't work that way, do they? That's the challenge. And the beauty, really, of metacognitive prompt engineering, we're essentially trying to bridge the gap between, you know, human and artificial intelligence, taking mm -hmm. the best of both worlds. We want AI that's um, capable of human-like flexibility and nuance, 
but also grounded in logic and transparency. It's like giving the AI the best of both worlds of the ability to process information like a supercomputer, but also to think like critically and ethically like a human philosopher. Wait, okay. That's a powerful combination. And that brings us to another crucial element of this workshop feedback. Right. Even the most advanced AI needs a little guidance now and then, right? Yeah. It's not like we're just going to like set it loose in the world and hope for the best. Exactly. Remember that circular table from earlier? Yeah. The one representing the, the continuous loop of feedback? That's where we, the human users, come in. Okay, so we're not just like passive observers in this workshop. We're, we're active participants shaping the AI's development. Absolutely. Through our interactions, we provide the AI with valuable data, helping it to refine its understanding of the world and uh, improve its performance. Think of it as a, a collaborative learning process where both humans and AI benefit. I love that. It's not about like man versus machine. It's about man with machine working together to achieve something incredible. But how exactly does this feedback loop work in practice? Are we talking about like constant evaluations, surveys, focus groups, that kind of thing? It can take many forms. It could be as simple as a user correcting a factual error made by the AI right. or um, providing additional context that the AI might have missed or it could be more involved with uh experts in specific fields providing feedback on the AI's reasoning and decision-making processes. So it's a constant dialogue, a yeah. back and forth exchange that helps the AI to, to grow and evolve. Exactly. That makes sense. But we've got to be careful here, right? right. I mean, we don't want to like stifle the AI's creativity or limit its potential. That's a valid concern. And it speaks to the, the delicate balance we have to strike. Yeah. We want to guide the AI's development without imposing our own biases or uh, limiting its ability to learn and adapt independently. It's about finding that sweet spot where human guidance and artificial intelligence can work together um, harmoniously. So we're talking about creating like a whole new kind of AI here. Yeah. One that's not just a tool, but like a partner. Right. In a sense. You yeah. Know? And that's a that's a pretty profound thought when you really stop to consider the the implications, right? It is profound. Yeah. And it's it's definitely something that we need to approach, you know, thoughtfully and carefully. Um, as we as we equip AI with increasingly sophisticated capabilities, we have a responsibility to to ensure that it's you know that, that it's used for good. Okay, so let's bring this back to our listeners for a sec. We've explored this uh, metacognitive workshop. We've seen how AI could be trained to be you know self-aware, contextually savvy, a logical thinker, constantly learning through feedback. But like, what does it all really mean? You know, where does this all lead? Imagine a world where. Uh where AI can help us to solve some of humanity's most pressing challenges, yeah. from um, developing new medical treatments, mm -hmm. to tackling climate change, to creating more personalized and effective uh, education systems. Okay, now we're talking about real impact. Yeah. Not just like making our lives easier, but actually making the world a better place. That That's the kind of future I can get behind. And that's and that's what makes this field so incredibly exciting. We're not just developing technology, we're, we're shaping the future of intelligence itself. No. And that's a journey that we're all on together. Absolutely. And on that note, I think it's time for us to uh, to wrap up this deep dive into the world of uh, metacognitive prompt engineering. It's been a it's been a wild ride, full of fascinating insights and and mind bending possibilities for sure. It has, and and we've only just you know we've only just scratched the surface of, of what's possible as research in this field continues to advance. Who knows what what incredible breakthroughs uh, await us. That's the beauty of it all, isn't it? It really is. The future is unwritten, and and with advancements in AI, like like metacognitive prompt engineering, it feels like we're like entering an era of of unprecedented possibility and innovation. Indeed, it's uh it's an exciting time to be uh to be following the development of artificial intelligence. And uh, for our listeners, we encourage you to continue exploring questioning and imagining the possibilities that uh, that lie ahead couldn't have said it better myself so until next time keep those brain cells buzzing and we'll see you on the next deep dive